little knife run, we're going underway. I don't think the knife run is going to be matter, matter too much on this map as much as much as teams will uh, opt for the defending side. A lot of teams also like going attack, uh, such as teams like Western Wolves play very aggressively on the attacking side. I think a Nexus do a great split and pick on this map. And uh, with Intuition kind of crumbling under the knives now, it's only Preki left alive. And uh, ooh, gets himself a frag, but gets taken up by Tomsky. And this will be play five to choose the side that they want. And what are they going to be choosing? Looks like it's going to be playing it on this side. So guys, let's get up into the game here. It will be play five versus Intuition on the second map. And uh, I think I even have two little, two little thingy for this. Wait for it, wait for it. Oh yeah, 1-0 to play 5. Now I'm moving here into the first round. Gonna take it with a scope. Scope's on the first round, as I do love doing so. Gonna be with Diora for the start of this one. Seeing if he can get himself a nice little cross pick. Unfortunately, the smokes are superb. He does actually tag up Tomsky, but uh, sees his teammates die to an aid as Cole gets an early one out there onto Steven. Tomsky's already made his way into the A side. Actually catches all the SMGs and all moving into that A side. Very detrimental for the uh, intuition guys want to have those early smokes and nades towards front A. Last play five to get to the box side very quickly. Tomsky with another one takes out Frankie. It's nated by his teammate, and I guess that's the only troubles you have when you push him that quickly. Planted. Is that you catch your own teammates rush nades off. Now uh, Diora has spotted distant here in mid. This is going to go for a couple no scopes. Lands the no scope onto Diora through the wall. Cheeky stuff from him. Uh, let's take it away from distant. His point of perspective is on the attacking side. Looks like they're going to go for a little split the pick. Little for random no scope. I doubt it's going to connect with anything. He has actually spotted the aura. Unfortunately, that's not going to go his way. Now, uh, moving over here onto the B side. He has got an SMG with him to be able to uh, cover any close range stuff. The aura takes out Tomsky. And now Steven laying in wait. He knows there's someone over towards this flower side. He heard the scope come this way. And of course, his teammates on A will be able to report back and say, oh, wait a minute, but there's no scope here. He must not be on B. But on a two point, looks away. Probably the, probably the most opportune time for Rapture to come around the corner, take him out. And now Diora stuck defending inside B on his own. His teammate is on the outside, though, as uh, Rapture moves forward. Takes that infectio to Steven. On Link takes out Haney. Now he knows the scope's around there somewhere. Goes off the distance, lands the frag. Now Rapture is your only one left alive for the Play 5 side, although he's the one with the bomb. And oddly enough, in this A side, if you get this bomb done, you've got some good, pretty good chances for defending, depending on how the teams play. But Diora with the nice little late nade. Scope's keeping their nades late. They'll be able to seal off the round there in their favor. On the scoreboard, it's Preki and Banana 2 Pawn yet to get frags. And uh, I'm pretty sure they should uh, they should be able to get it this round. Now taking it away here with Infexio as he moves over here into the A side, rushing forward to that SMG, not being stopped by any uh, rush grenades or anything like that. We'll be able to secure his position. Steven takes out Rapture. Now Steven once again on this B side, playing it very well. Reminds me that as in Rhea used to play SMG on B side. And uh, I will say Steven is doing it rather well right now. Steven, here's the gun change just around the corner, although he's going to stay in tight. He does not want to give away his position just yet. He'll be able to stack up any players that do try and rush out of the link at the same time. And uh, with his teammate grabbing a frag there too, means that he's just making it more and more comfortable for him to sit in. Haney takes out Preki. Diora replies onto Haney though, and now uh, that means Carl's your last man standing. He's in link, he has got the bomb with him. Be a good trend that these uh, play five players end off with their last player always having the bomb. Intuition with a one round lead though, as they have. I mean, with, like, again, this is now where the map choice comes in because uh, at this point in time, you know, this is the, technically the last round that Intuition got in backlog because then he got two rounds. So if play five want to repeat their performance, they should now not allow Intuition to get any more rounds. But I think it's going to go that way. I think that uh, Intuition have had the scent of winning early on and they are motivated this round. They didn't like back lot. They did mention it early on in the game. So uh hopefully their luck changes on this one. Rapture now pushing forward here onto the double palms area. He is not gonna be moving up, does grab the frag onto the scope. Here's the player moving on to Garage, although Haney takes him up means Steven's the last man standing and wow coming back with a force. Where is Steven? Clicking the wrong buttons. Seems that he'll die before I even get to change to him. 2-2 is the current scoreline. 
has uh, all four <laughs> All four of the top players scoring the exact same score on four frags. Dura going to be going for the cross towards that healing area, although the smokes go up, stopping him taking out the players crossing from healing. Now the thing about that smoke is it's very well placed, so it covers covers uh, Dura if he does try and go over onto the Stevie jump or that glitch jump there to cover the middle of the street. Now pushing forward, he has but his teammates drop inside that inside of that A site and it tries to go for a cheeky peek through the smoke. Unfortunately nothing comes from it. Now it's going to be able to move on to the, up onto the bomb site. It does not have the bomb though. And it's gonna be the person to clear out that bomb site and be a little more aggressive moving forward. Takes out Diora. There is one more player towards that spawn house. He's not looking up though. And ooh, with that break is Break is probably just gonna drop out at some point and uh, just fall right in front of Tomsky's aim. And moving forward. Ooh, gets heavily tagged up. Well, does want to peek around the corner, though Tomsky with Deagle means that play five finish off the fifth round there in their favor. 3 2 at the moment. But on a two pawn yet to get a frag. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? There he is with the golden AK. Let's give him a little bit of love. Let's uh, see what he can do here in the, the start of the round. Looks like he's going to try and avoid the nades. Unfortunately, it doesn't go his way, though. And uh, he will be dropping early on for a still zero kills scoreboard. Now Pranker trying to move in here. The problem about the intuition side losing this A side is that it doesn't seem like they're able to reclaim it back at this point in time. Pranky trying to push forward, although Tomsky just covering so well. Diora takes out Haney, and Diora is expecting Tomsky to push forward. He's watching that. He knows how aggressive Play 5 have been the last couple of rounds, and uh, I think he's hoping that that is the exact way that's going to happen now. Although it doesn't look so. Now Diora being forced to move towards front eight. Whereas Steven? Steven's deciding he's gonna rather gonna go late towards double palm. The thing is, with only 25 seconds left on the clock, they don't have much time to just fiddle about and wait for the enemy to peek. They've got to make things happen. And he now tries to shoot through the wall. He spots the leg and actually fails to close off that frag. Dura takes out distant though, only 10 seconds left on the board. They have to make something happen now. It's actually too late. There's no way they can get on the bomb. And uh, no matter what happens right now, it won't matter. Even if they got both those frags, you need seven seconds to defuse that bomb. And uh, that was not going to happen at the end of the day. Going to keep with Banana 2 Pawn. I want him to get a frag on stream. Come on. He, he needs to get a frag. He's actually changed it up. He's now got SMG. Has that at front spawn. Looks like he's just changing it up to the kind of suit. Uh, his playstyle a little bit better. And uh, makes his way all the way to Cafe. Quick rush. Should be able to pick up frags, but no rapture. Very quick on the trigger. Takes up Banana 2 Pawn. He's currently on 0 for 6. Could we see a bond? But probably the first one of the playoffs. Probably the first one of the tournaments, if anything. But 5-2 um, the scoreline. Play 5 just decimating intuition at this point in time. It looks like they really are trying to shut them down and give it the exact same score of the last map. Where is... Not on it to point. Does he still got the SMG? Yes, he does. I just went past them. There we go. Let's see if he can try it again. He's got to watch out for this late nades. He's been caught out so many times from them. He needs to pull back further. And it does avoid the car explosion to his left-hand side before moving into the bomb side a little bit later. Oh and Dustin takes him out. That puts him on zero for seven. Oh, he's on bond. And if you are new to COD 4 Pro Mod, we do call a bond at 007, which means zero kills, zero assists, but seven deaths. And Dustin takes out Diora. Fantastic headshot as he beats double palms. There's only one more player left. This Steven. He's trying to come around the back. Unfortunately, with Tomsky behind the front of a wall, he'll be able to take him out. Although that car explosion tags up Steven. Steven actually keeps it past it. Takes out distant too. And Carl's quickly going to be called to retreat. He's been alerted. It's like, wait a minute. Why are my teammates dying so quickly? Steven, I think, has seen some movement towards double or towards that taps area, though. He's not lurking behind the baskets. And that's such an unfortunate one, as uh, that is really about the one place you need to look right now. Steven has heard something. And he has spotted the player behind Taps. He's moving forward. He has got the SMG. He's got the close range advantage. Can he close the frag? He lands it. Can he get back to the bomb in time? He needs to run. Get that defuse in now. Yes, he does. One versus three from Steven. Wow. And that'll bring it back to a 5 3 scoreline. Coming defused. all the way from behind B. Pushing right up towards front A side. The odds were stacked against him. And he just shoved it right back into, in, into Play 5's face. It's the exact one I meant. Come on. It, now, Banana 2 Point is going to get a frag this round. I know it. I just have that feeling. If I can find him, has he changed up again? Yeah, okay. He's still on SMG. I thought he was. Wow. That's really unfortunate from him. I do think it's something to get deserved, though, because he's being caught up by the exact same mate every single round. And uh, he 
just needs to change it up, go B, you know, move around with Steven a bit, tell Steven that he's just dying on A constantly, ask for help, it can happen. Raptor seems to be shaking his mouth a little bit, making sure it's still in sync. As we do see a flurry of Franks coming out, Dior is now your last one, standing in a one versus two. He's got to make his way all the way towards front eight. And I hope that he can Explosives do something planted. about the bomb going down. Ooh, he does take out Carl, although Dior is not expecting the flank. And, oh, he's probably going to be taken out by this any second. He picks up the SMG. Ooh, SMG fire coming in from Rapture was a little bit slow, actually. And Dior nearly had enough time to uh, flick around and lay down some fire. Unfortunately, not so. Can the story of Banana 2 Pawn change by any means, or is this going to be some kind of Twilight thing where it's the exact same crap over and over again? And then he has made his way into the double pumped area. He wants to move forward, waiting up with his nades. He seems very cautious about his movements. He's moving towards Cafe, already pre aiming. He knows how quick Rapture was last time with that SMG. Oh, <laughs> just the takes on Banana 2 Pawn once again. This is just so unlucky from him. It's, it's been in. The worst situations nearly every single round. And a deal right now. One versus three. Can he find the Frank onto Distan? No, he cannot. And he's actually re-peaking Distan. I would not suggest that. That is never a good idea to try and re-peak a scope that has just had your position covered. Although Distan actually had moved away. Now. Sorry, this is the last man standing. Wow, it's actually one versus three. And it's up to Distan. I completely misread that. I was not expecting it to be in uh, this kind of situation. Distant now moving forward has got the bomb. There is a player on Garage. None of his tags land though. He's going to repeat with that scope. As uh, he does see the AK fire, his position has changed. And now making it further up onto Statue. Gets taken out by Preki. Pushes it to 6 4. Only two rounds left in the half though. And uh, if anything, they're going to need to make something quite big happen. And in a very short space of time. Uh, distant moving forward here is going to have a nice nade here onto the double bombs. Where is the number two pawn? Is he going to... Oh, I just went past him. Oh, wow, that's... That's impossible. Zero for ten? I don't think that that should be allowed. That should be like illegal. Steven and Pranky get a frag apiece though. We see two play five players heavily tagged up. They should be able to reach in though. Carl gets himself a frag onto Infexio and Steven. And now a two versus three has formed where... Diora and Preki need to try and hold the ground. Diora split up with his teammate though. Where is Preki? He is actually all the way in cafe. Peeks around the corner, tags up Cole. Although Cole, the pre fire takes out Preki, and I believe that's his third frag of the round. Diora now trying to watch that cross. Unfortunately, doesn't connect with the shot. Drops out into into that mid street area. I don't think he's expecting someone in his spawn. Here's a short edge. Planted. Haney with a spray of that AK takes out Diora, pushes it to 7 4. That means there's only one round left in the half. One round for our main man, Banana 2 Pawn, to get a frag, or he will be 0 for 11. I'm not saying that's bad, I'm just saying that's not very really good. Especially not this far into the playoffs. Carl takes out Steven with an aid there onto Statue though, and now Banana 2 Pawn is going to be the man to call to move up onto the A side. Tagged up from Cafe, needs to hide, buddy. Teammates getting frags around him. Can he finally get himself a little bit of luck? And he lands the frag on Destin at any time. He really gets the one play that needs to be taken out. I will be so happy for him. Hold on. Yes, banana. Dude, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> All right, so giving him a little bit of love. But yeah, guys, if you do want to check us out, very quickly, just pop it in there. If you guys want to follow us on Facebook, check out forward slash quad v on Facebook, at quad v on Twitter, and forward slash quad v TV on YouTube. If you guys want to check me out, I am at menace on Twitter, and I'm also on Facebook. You guys can check me out forward slash menace FPS. Now back to the game, though. It is the first map, sorry, the second map. The first map went in favor of Play 5, but it's currently a 1 0 score lines. Second half now on the second map, Intuition. Uh, sorry, Play5 have got the lead, currently 7-5, they are now on the defending side, do not believe what the top of the screen actually currently tells you. Dior with the opening frag, just gets himself 1-2 on to the on the Paul though. And the scopes opening up for the start of this half. And if it's a sign of anything to come, should be a good half indeed. Now Steven making his way towards B, he always played the aggressive side on B, but from the other side, or from the other... 
from the uh, defending side rather than the attacking side. And he seems to be a little more slower moving out here. SMG position, of course. People would opt to move a little bit closer. He has put a distance. Unfortunately, Rapture comes out from that mid shop there. It takes him out. Infexia with a reply, though. And now it means that Distant gets the frag onto Infexia for once again just replying. They're just covering each other right now. And it seems the intuition just can't keep following up, though. Dioro, Dioro drops the scope there for a moment, but very quickly picks it back up. Distant happily peeking out towards that top flower side. Uh, definitely should just get something to lubricate up my vocal cords. Distant spots a player there on towards B lane. Misses two shots. Now Tomsky just laying very comfortably in a flower bed. I guess that's how the white man likes it. Tom's going to finally moving forward onto that garage area. Frankie takes out Carl. They've still got to be careful about Distant though. And uh, with a nade like that onto the bomb, there's not much they're going to have to do. They're going to have to abort the plant. Oh, he doesn't though. Tomsky takes out Diora, goes for the replant. And uh, Distant can't see anything on that bomb. Tomsky taking out Preki though is going to push it to 8 5. And there you go. Now the top of the screen finally updates. And it reads the correct thing. Excuse the scope spam. Now, uh, Distant, can he go for the cross here on B Link? Doesn't need to connect. No, it does not seem to. Be. So, Diora taking out Haney. So Tomsky can also get himself a little bit fresh there on that B side. Play 5 have got zero people in A. I would like to point at this point in time. But on the two pawns in there with his teammate. Trying to push up on statue. It is Steven with him. SMG is gunning it up front. So way it should be done. And they've got to be careful about nades though. But on the two pawns. Plants looking straight up at the sky. Hoping that nothing connects. Explosive Even it does get planted. taken out by Tomsky's SMG. Now with the two pawn. The only one actually in A. This is going to be very difficult for them to try and defend. Pawn trying to lay down some covering fire on the double palms area. Rapture takes out Prey. Keep on the pawn once again pushing forward. There's two players there. There's got to be very careful about his next couple of moves. He's out of ammo. Pulls out the deagle. Cole takes him out. Dior's now lost my standing. He's nowhere near in position. This definitely is not how they should be playing it. They need to be playing closer together as a team. Dior is either going to either be taken or they're going to get the defuse in. And there they go. Cole gets in the defuse. And I'm not impressed the way that Intuition closed off that round. They had the SMGs in there, which is great. You know, SMGs up front should be in there, but right behind you should have the AKs. AKs coming up from front A, um, you know, Scope and Overlook, or Scope pushing in behind Cafe after quite a long time. And it just seems like there was none of that in there. It was just the SMGs pushing forward, they got the bomb down, and there's no one else in there. Pretty much just died trying to get back to the A site. Justin has spotted Diora, though. No, he hasn't. He spotted one of Diora's teammates, it was Steven. And now Diora trying to find trying to find that very elusive Distant. Although, it looks like Distant is actually moving into the line of fire for Diora. And Diora now finally looking away at the one time he shouldn't be. Raps takes out Diora, but on to pawn with the revenge frag. And Tom's gonna making his way in towards A. Well, back in towards A. He's on the defending side. He should be in A. There should be no one else trying to take away his position for from him. And it just seems that Intuition are playing this way too slow. They're, st they're still stuck in Underlook, and if you anyone here is familiar with my streams on Strike, I always say about how bad Underlook is to be stuck under. I mean, it's about the one place on the map you do not want to be late on in the game, because it's so easy to just um, pretty much barrier the people off in Underlook and just not let them get out. Looks like they're going to try and cross in towards that A side, although funneling into that cafe area is not going to be good, and especially with Tomsky laying in wait. Dustin and Haney actually grabbing away Tomsky's pranks. He wouldn't even have anything to worry about. Carl coming in all the way from P-Shops, takes out uh, Banana 2 Pawn. That's going to push it to 10-5. And a uh, five rounds difference. Only three rounds more needed for play five, and they will be moving on into the round of 32, where they will be facing off against Team ESPC, uh, which should be quite a difficult game, I will say them so. Late nade from Haney takes up Infexio as Tomsky pushes forward towards that cafe side and uh, take the longer route to the single farm. And this is one of the routes that, I mean, I don't think at any one point in time we saw Intuition from that position. 
Tomsky once again keeps pushing forward, takes out Preki, pushes the 2-11-5, and like I said, with that much of a round difference, you can just stop playing around and start doing silly things like rushing into Cafe. It just puts you, you know, it, it either just closes off the round very quickly or you lose the round very quickly. And uh, when you have the opportunity to lose that many rounds, they'll just try and close off the rounds as quick as they can. And you're actually trying to rush in through mid though, trying to change something up here for the 17th round. Oh, Good Frankie, does actually take out this then. Gonna fall back. Gotta be careful though, as Raptors actually pushed all the way into Underlook with a shotgun. Frankie in mid though. There's two SMGs in mid for intuition. Probably not the best positioning for both of them to be in there, but I guess if they're trying to do some special tactics themselves. Oh, it's not actually well at all. Frankie and Yura both drop as uh, Infectious is now your last man standing in mid shops. He's got his teammate behind him, Steven, who's in B shops. Some heavy fire. He knows that Steven's right there. Now, it does finally land the frag there onto Steven. Infexio, your last one standing. For intuition, does not actually have the bomb with him. I don't know if he's trying to go for the frags, but with only 45 seconds left, he really doesn't have much time to be playing around. He's heard a player here moving on the corner. Takes out Haney, but still on the player to find Cold over at B Link. It's going to push it to 12 5 as he takes an Infexio. It means only one more round needed for the Play 5 side, and they will be taking this game a, a lovely 2-0 and move on to the round of 32. So once again, Thompson is going to be rushing into this A side. Nate Flash going up towards front edge. Looks like going to be very aggressive. Steven and Haney get the opening frag kills as a Rapture once again rushing out into mid-street, although it didn't work that time as Intuition played a little bit more of a slower game. Uh, Preki there gets himself two frags, both Rapture and Distant are dropping to the fire of his AK. As pushes forward, takes out Preki, he's going to fall back while they're playing at the safe route. He knows that their team is one man down at the moment. And then he needs to work this one carefully. Takes out Banana 2 Pawn, and uh, Cole takes out Steven, and there we go. I mean, from a 3 versus 2 to a 1 versus 2, you're a uh, lost man standing. He is laying down some fire there onto Cole, lands the headshot. And actually the first deagle, oh, sorry, the first round of his deagle. But now with Tomsky still standing, oh, Yura has been spotted. And under that much AK fire, is actually being tagged up quite heavily. And uh, it's going to be a rather a task and a half to try and get back across the street. Has been spotted once more from Tomsky's angle. He's actually just hopping up and down. He's trying to lay down some fire, trying to use Diora. Oh, Diora lands a headshot though, takes him out. And that'll bring it back to 12-6, although there's still six rounds that Intuition need to try and bring back if they want to um, if they want to win this game. Oh, sorry, sorry, draw this game. And then take it into an overtime. Now, uh, just the going for the middle jump. Is there smoke? Yes, there is. He didn't even actually make the jump. And fails his nade. Wow, that's uh, an interesting nade to fail. Goes for a nice little 360 as he runs out. Towards the B entrance. <gasps> and makes fire towards Underlook. But uh, nothing connects. Tomsky once again playing a very slow cafe. Being slightly aggressive, but not overly aggressive. He just wants to make sure that they're being held at bay. And uh, Intuition stuck in Underlook. Three, four players there. Four full players like this right now are stuck in Underlook. And uh, like I said, once you're in this position, it is near impossible to try and get back up. Momentum going. Tomsky takes up an honor to point. Brecky and Infexio find back those. They're both going to find a piece. Now play five actually down a man at the moment. Make that two as uh Frankie takes out Cole. Distant your last man standing. Although oh Oh distant. Oh you are you really going to do it? The player's right there on the bomb. Pops the smoke out. He's gonna try and ninja defuse it. Explosive Can he get it though? That is the big question. He started the defuse. Oh the spray comes out from Infexio. It doesn't work, unfortunately. That would have been a sick way to end the round. And 12-7 uh, are the score, only five rounds difference. Uh, so they have worked it down from seven. So there's an, they've been, uh, had a two-round train rolling. Let's see if they can get some more more going at the moment. Though Rapture makes his way in towards that mid shops. He has actually got the better positioning though. Oh no, he doesn't. But honestly, Pawn heavily expecting that one. And uh, catching Rapture off guard as Rapture runs into the mid shops. The Euro falls to his death somehow. I don't even know where you fall to your death on strike. Must have been heavily tanged up from somewhere. Distant lands a shot there on Banana 2. Pawn 3 on 3. Tomsky lands a shot there onto Pranky. Fantastic stuff from him. Infexio moves forward. Gets the first frag there onto Distant. There's another one around the corner though in the form of Tomsky. If, uh, if he plays this one patiently enough. 
don't think he's going to be peeking it though. He shouldn't be peeking it though, if anything. He needs to get that bomb down, try and uh, help Explosives his teammate get cover planted. on that bomb site. Tomsky spots Steven moving away from that bomb site. Now Tomsky moves forward. Infexio still laying here on the double palms of this. Spot Steven. Steven heavily tagged up. Steven actually lands the shot down to Tomsky. In fact, he's going to peek around the corner. He's going to be able to pick up the frag. Ooh, gets heavily tagged up by a Deagle. Carl actually uh, getting himself a couple of, or landing some nice uh, Deagle rounds. But Steven going to be the one closing off the round. Takes it to 12 8. Three runs in a row now. So looking sturdy, I nearly want to say. I mean, it's not like they're doing badly by any means. Consistent with a spot there onto Yora as he sees this clip flying across that uh, the alley camp. Yora now peeking out and towards mid. There isn't any players on the garage or single palms where Tomsky would normally be. Cole though in towards mid takes that Infectio and that with Diora takes or oh, lands a shot there onto Haney. Once again just evening up those team numbers. Dustin gets the shot onto Diora and that is the scope out for Intuition. Probably one of the plays that you really don't want to have out right now. But on a two pawn. I'm trying to say something nice about him sitting far back in spawn and getting a frag, although there's no easy way to say it. He was still sitting very far back. I don't know if he was playing slow, which is expecting play five to be very uh, aggressive. Breaky takes out Cole and brings it back to a two on two. And as the Bernardo Pawn tries to push out here onto the statue, put, moves forward, does not clear statue, and Rapture with an AK actually gets the shot. Breaky has missed one of in cafe. What can he do for his team though? La Ooh, no scope through the wall. Oh, sorry, not no scope. Scope through the wall, and that'll be a 13 8 scoreline for Team Play 5 to take its third. Sorry, to take it 2 0. That's exactly what I meant to say. Either way, though, guys, that was another game from the round of 32 in the game. Sorry, Fast Host Game Shadows. Shadows. Shadow Bat. I've never been good with these tournament introductions or exits. Right, let's try again. Fast Host Power Tournament. Uh, round 32. Play 5 will be taking a 2-0 over Intuition. And then we're moving forward to play Team SBC in the round of 32. I believe I said that correctly. I have been Menace, guys. If you want to guys check, it out, check me out on Twitter, at Menace. And then also on Facebook, forward slash MenaceFPS. Either way, guys, to enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, check out quadview.com for any more schedule updates. See you soon.